that we are to be holding forth the word of life here in this world. And we're to do it without reproach and unrebukable. Now, the number one way most Christians sin, because you don't even have to go anywhere. Okay? You don't have to spend money. Some people, people, I don't sin. It's because you ain't got the money to go sin. If you had the money, you'd go sin. But some people understand you can sin without money. And the number one way Christians sin is with their mouth. And by saying things, alluding to things. This is the number one way. That's why when Paul was talking about not grieving the Spirit, he put it right in the middle of the verse that says, to watch your mouth and not let corrupt communication come out of your mouth and not to say these things. And put it, if you notice, put away all wrath and malice and evil speaking and surmising. See a surmising. Say, what is a surmising? That's when you, hmm, you know what? I'll bet, I'll bet this is what he's thinking. See, that's a surmising. No, you're not a mind reader. And what you think you have the gift of, of discerning of spirits is actually a gift of suspicion. <laughs> and you need to realize that you need to repent of that. And just using your tongue to decimate brethren. So the Bible says a fool answers a matter before he hears it. Too many Christians say things that they don't know anything about. And it's amazing because they'll say things, they, they will answer a question they know nothing about with an answer that because they don't know about it, the answer is wrong and or a lie. Sometimes they know it's a lie, sometimes they don't but they don't want the facts to get in the way, so they spread a good lie. So we have to realize, if before, listen, the Bible is clear. Judgment has to start in the house of God. Now, that doesn't mean a building. We are the house of God. It has to start with us. And he said, if you judge yourselves, you will not be judged. Steve Hill used to say that you must grasp the opportunity during the life of the opportunity. In other words, you've got to take hold of the situation while you can because there is a window during which certain things are made available. And if you miss that, sometimes, okay, um, the Israelites, they had a window to move into the promised land. And they chose not to believe. They said, we can't do it. They're too big. And God said, okay. You think they're bigger than me. You said, why did I bring you out here to die? Okay, walk around the wilderness for 40 years. I'll get rid of that generation, and I'll open a window for the next generation. Beloved, I don't want to miss a window. I want to move into the things that God has. 